We reviewed this. We reviewed this. And now we're gonna test this one. This looks to be the last of the red video movie releases by JVC in the 80s. And I think they really got their act together with this camera. We're gonna test it in the real world and see how it compares to the other JVC video movies, what improvements they made, what was left out. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna look at a wireless mic that JVC introduced specifically for this camera and a few of the other video movies. Will a wireless mic even work from the 80s today? Will the signals be able to be transmitted with all the cell phones and microwaves and new radio waves that we have? Well, we're gonna try it. And all of this is coming up right now. So I received my GR60 from eBay and it came in the original box, a kind of attractive red and white cardboard box. Looks like JVC dropped the C before the number. It's not the GRC60, it's the GR60. I'm not sure what that C stood for, but in any event, it comes in a case and the camera itself is right here, an attractive two-tone red and dark gray camera. Uh, it comes with the battery charger and a battery the instruction book, and it also came with the original sales receipt. Quite a steal for $922. So this is the JVC GR60. Now, we had the JVC GRC1, which I reviewed, the JVC GRC2, which I reviewed, and the JVC GRC7. They went from two to seven. I don't think there was anything in between that. So what happened between seven and 60? Were there 53 cameras in the middle? From what I could research, there was a JVC GRC9, a JVC GRC11, which had very different styling. And then they went back to red with the GR25 and our GR40, which looked kind of similar to this camera. But the big difference with this camera is take a look at the lettering here, Flying Erasehead. It looks like this is the first video movie which introduced the Flying Erasehead. And boy, that is a worthwhile feature because if you recall, every time that you cut scenes with the older video movies, you have this glitch right in the middle of the scene, which could ruin the scene, especially the first few seconds, that rainbow effect. But the flying erase head eliminates that. So finally, we've got a little bit of a professional feature. And the internal mechanism has changed too. We don't have that whiny tape sound. And fortunately, we also don't have to press two buttons to engage record. All you have to do is there's just one button to press record. Like the older cameras, that sets up the mechanism. And to record, you actually press the red button on the handle and that sets the tape in motion and recording has begun. Still have the black and white viewfinder. Uh, it does tilt up, which is nice. And you can see the date, which says November 1989. So we know around the time that this camera was introduced. Like the older video movies, the viewfinder is detachable, so in case you wanted to store it separately or you needed to replace it. And the controls for playback and rewind are all right on the back of the camera and you can see your tape results right through the viewfinder. So as far as what's improved over the other video movies, the zoom ratio has gone up from six times to eight times. Like the other video movies, you can control focus either manual or auto, except the GRC1, which was only a manual camera. You can control white balance, however, and shutter speed is added to this as well. But the one thing which seems to have been dropped, which I could not find, is a way to adjust manual exposure. There was a sort of a rudimentary way on the JVC GRC1 where you could slide the lever up and down, which opens and closes the, the iris. But that seems to have been dropped, unfortunately, with this camera. This camera uses the same VHS C-type cassettes as the other video movies. And it also uses the same batteries, which, by the way, are becoming harder and harder to find now. If you're using a larger battery, just keep in mind that they move the battery attachment to the side. So it's hard to get your hand around it. It sort of gets stuck in the clasp. So you may want to use the more standard, thinner batteries in this camera. There's a proprietary audio video out if you wanted to use the camera to watch your tapes back, which I never really recommend because that just puts wear and tear on the camera. You're always better off using a special adapter to play in your VCR, if at all possible. 
Okay, so in my review of the GRC2, I compared the picture quality of that camera to the GRC1. Now let's look at the GR60 and see how it compares. And you're gonna see a drastic difference, whereas the GRC2 and GRC1 is very pastel, the GRC60 has vibrant colors. It's a very different look, isn't it? But indoors, the situation hasn't really improved as the low light, here is the GR60, is still not great, very dark. So the colors are much more lush and deep with this camera and it does very well with greens. So let's bring this to a very green place. Let's go to Central Park. You're being filmed with a very old camera. I don't know if you recognize this. That's amazing. I love vintage style. Yeah. You wish you were alive in the 80s, huh? Um, no, but because then I'll be old. I like the 90s better. So when she looked through the viewfinder and saw black and white, she assumed that the image was being recorded in black and white, which actually is kind of logical. You look through it, this is what you see. It's all black and white. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You like black and white? Black and white is kind of cool of an effect, right? Yeah. 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 So it, you can't change it. This is only what you see in the in the viewfinder. It actually comes out in color, but which oh, okay. it's just, it's just the, the the monitor was so old you could only see black and white. Oh, and isn't, isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now let's see if this wireless mic actually will work with this camera and how well it does. So it looks like it cost about 150 bucks back in 1989. That's pretty expensive. Let's see if this thing performs. Opening it up from the box, we have the transmitter, or is that the receiver? I never could get that right. There's two prongs, and that goes into the dedicated two prongs in the camera. So it does fit uh, the camera perfectly. And this is the actual mic that you put on your belt. It's a little lapel mic, which runs on a couple of uh, AAA batteries, which I have installed. And it also comes with a headphone, which is nice. So you can monitor the sound. And as an added bonus, they throw in a little clip. So it is complete and with instructions as well, but that seems pretty easy. I don't think I have to read these. I mean, this is pretty basic, right? Right. Okay, I'm gonna do a pretty basic field test and attach uh, the wireless mic to the camera. The problem is there's no hot shoe on this camera, so you sort of have to have this thing dangling. It's a little awkward, but at least there's a headphone output, so I can see if there's sound coming out. So I'm gonna just walk back from the camera in increments and see if it picks up the sound. Okay, I'm standing about six feet away. I'm holding the microphone. I'm not attaching it, so it should be around the same idea. Let's step back a few extra feet. And we're gonna to continue to walk back and we'll see how this wireless microphone from the 80s does. Will it find some interference in the atmosphere and not work? We are continuing back. We're probably about 10 feet here. Three. Getting pretty obvious that this is terrible until I realized that I did not have it extended. Oops, maybe I should have read those instructions. Let's redo the test. I That's probably going to make a difference. Once again, it's a little difficult to attach, but there it goes. Let's try it again. Okay, silly me. I didn't have the antenna extended, so we're going to try this again. Antenna fully extended about four or five feet away. Here's about six feet away from the camera. 
and we'll keep going back and we'll see how we're doing. This is probably as far back as one would be during a typical interview type situation about, I don't know, 10 to 12 feet away. Anything further back than this is probably just gravy. I'm suspecting that based on the last test, there's going to be some problems. You can hear the insects in the trees. I don't know if you can pick that up. Now we're really far back here, 20, 25 feet away. And we'll keep going back. We're all the way back here. I am doubting this is going to work. We are all the way back on the other end. Pretty damn impressive, I'd say. Sound quality is not great, but it works. This camera, this JVC, really is a winner. So in conclusion, it looks like the final red video movie that JVC came out with it really is the best one of all. With the inclusion of flying erase heads and a nice smaller, sleeker size, this camera is much more pleasurable to use. It's easier to carry around. It's less heavy. And it also has that cool red color too. I was lucky with this camera because I really didn't find any major issues with it. Everything seemed to work well, which is very unusual. Usually when you buy a vintage camcorder online, there's going to be something wrong. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the do's and don'ts of buying vintage camcorders online, please take a moment to check out my video, which gives you some important tips and ways to avoid disappointment. If you like what you saw, if you learned something, if you got a little bit of nostalgia, please hit like, subscribe to this channel. We are growing and coming out with more videos on a regular basis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.